Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's find a hard drive to use for time machine backups. So are you backing up? You really should. Time Machine comes with Leopard, so you've already got the software. All you need to do is supply a hard drive to save the backups too. And then you're protected either from disaster or from an accidental deletion. When shopping for a hard drive to use, there are four different types. The first is the standard normal external hard drive. It comes with a power adapter, you plug it into power, and you plug it into your Mac either via USB or Firewire. Another type is the portable drive. This is basically the same idea except it's a smaller drive similar to the ones used in laptops. So it doesn't require external power. You just plug it in usually via USB and it gets all the power it needs from USB. So it's a little simpler but they're a little bit more expensive and they don't hold as much data. Now if you've got a Mac Pro you can actually add more internal hard drives. So you can add an internal hard drive like this one and use that for time machine backups. Likewise even if you don't have a Mac Pro, you can buy a dock like this Nexstar dock and you can plug in an external hard drive here and use USB to connect it to your Mac. Now it's never been a better time to buy an external drive because they're really cheap right now. You can get one of those standard external drives, one terabyte for about 120 bucks and half a terabyte for about 80 bucks. You can also get portable ones. They're going to be smaller but like 320 gig one will usually run you about 100 bucks. In addition, you can get the internal ones even cheaper a terabyte for under $100. Determining what side you need depends on how you use your Mac. You've got to figure out how much stuff is on your Mac's hard drive. Not necessarily important how big the hard drive is but how much of it you're using. For instance, I do a lot of video so I've easily got hundreds of gigabytes of stuff on my drive. But somebody who just does occasional photos and has a little music may only have a few gigs total on their drive. You add the system to it, of course, because you want to back everything up, including the library and the fonts and your printer drivers, everything on your Mac, so you can completely recreate the hard drive in case of a crash. And you're probably looking at 20 gigs minimum and a few hundred if you're someone like me using a lot of media. So select your hard drive in the finder and get info on it to find out how much space you're using. Now this will help you figure out how big of a hard drive you need. Now if you're using less than 100 gigabytes, then you probably can just do with a standard drive. It doesn't really pay to get anything less than 500 gigabytes nowadays. So I'd go and get one of those external drives, 500 gigabytes for about 80 bucks and use that. But if you're using a lot more, if you're using several hundred gigs, then you probably want to look at a terabyte drive. Your first backup, of course, is going to be a complete backup of everything on your drive. So expect if you've got 100 gigs on your drive for the backup to be 100 gigs. But after that, it's going to do it incrementally. So it's only going to save the files that changed. This means if you change a lot of big files every day, you're going to have very large backups. But if you rarely change files, like your big files are music files and photos and things like that that just stay on the drive and you occasionally add new ones to it, then you're going to have very small backups every day. So if you have 100 gigs in your initial backup and you have a 500 gig external drive and you have very small backups, then you're probably going to be able to save months and months worth of backups on a single drive. Where if you're working with video like I am, it's probably only going to be able to save a few days or weeks worth of backups before it needs to destroy the old ones to save the new ones. Either way, as long as you can get one good backup on a drive, you've got a big advantage over not having a backup at all. Now some neat things about Time Machine backup drives. You can use them for more than one computer. So you set the backup drive to be a Time Machine backup drive by using the Time Machine preferences and saying you want to use that drive. It erases everything on it and then you start the backup of your computer onto that drive. You can then take that drive, plug it into another computer, say you want to use it and it won't erase the drive. Instead it will store a second folder with all the backups for that computer on it. So if you have two or three computers in your house, you can use one large drive to back them all up as long as you move them from computer to computer. Now there's also a way to back up over your network. So if you have several computers, you can back up to a drive that's attached to only one of them. I'll talk about that more in this week's tip at the site and in the MacMost newsletter. Now by default, Time Machine will back up every hour. If that's a little bit too much for you, you can use a handy program called Time Machine Editor. We've recommended it before uh, to schedule backups or have it back up less frequently than every hour. You can also schedule Time Machine to only back up when the drive's plugged in. So you can have one drive move from computer to computer, you plug it in, and within the next few minutes, it'll start a Time Machine backup. So where to buy an external hard drive? Well, there are fewer and fewer computer stores out there. And the Apple Store's hard drives are nice but tend to be a little overpriced. So you probably want to buy them online. You can go to Amazon or a store like Newegg. I'll put some recommendations in the post for this video at MacMost.com of some hard drives that I've bought in the past and have worked well for me. Well, if you've been procrastinating buying a hard drive for Time Machine backups, well, the time is now. 
whether you've got very important work on your Mac or just a few precious photos, you really should have a backup. It's completely worth it. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.